Scott, welcome everyone yet again to another Ticket Freaks 212. I am your host, Carlos, and as always, we're here to talk to you about movies. On today's movie top, sorry, on today's movie topic, we will be discussing Fruitville Station. The true story of Oscar Grant III, a 22-year-old Bay Area resident who crosses paths with friends, enemies, families, and strangers on the last day of 2008. Fruitville Station, made in 2013 as a biography slash drama directed by Ryan Coogler, screenplay also by Ryan Coogler, cast includes... Alright, let's begin. It made $16 million. That's not a bad chunk of change right there. Uh, the concept of the movie was to provide you with the biography and the life of Oscar Grant III. And I thought it really was respectfully and properly done. In my opinion on that, the message it delivered was to cherish those that you love and really hold them tightly. To me, a really meaningful movie and it really sent out a really strong message in my opinion on that one. As far as heroes go, I believe that Michael B. Jordan's character, Oscar, he actually had the heroic quality type characteristics of a hero. Um, and uh, the villains were the people we, this is sad to say, were the people we enforced to protect and serve us. Now normally I've seen some cop movies where they're crooked cops and they're dirty cops or they're good cop, bad cop situations. Okay, I can see that in a different perspective. But in this one, you got to see, so I don't see it as often, is a real life uh, situation where uh, bad cops were caught doing certain things and you got to see the real raw material brought to life in this big screen film or cinema sorry get off the train now put that phone away i don't really have much to say about visual to me it was it was good nothing really to say uh music wise though i believe was it provided the tools to connect with the characters and the emotions and the story and I, I really thought it really moved me to follow along with it to take the journey and feel for it the dialogue I thought was well crafted considering it was supposed to be a book smart movie it was just supposed to be a street smart movie and then instead of having a sophisticated uh, dialogue it was more of a slang dialogue which is okay I thought it was very intriguing to see that the story was of course a journey worth watching not a waste of my time in my opinion uh, Ryan Coogler's direction in this movie, I thought was executed perfectly, since he actually took a step-by-step -step of Oscar Grant III's life in his journey, his emotions, his struggles, his feelings, everything about, about the character himself, without ever meeting the guy, and actually really putting him out there for us to see, to get into a character, and I thought perfectly directed, really did. Um, hmm... I thought it was a perfect amount of time and it wasn't too much of a character and not too little of a character. Uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was just a very perfect balance and the perfect amount. Uh, from beginning, the beginning to me was a mixed feelings of love and hate. Uh, right around the middle, they try to reel you in to just to get into feeling for characters in the movie and then the end dropped the bombshell. And it really did drop a really big bombshell. I'm not going to say or spoil the movie. Um, let me just keep you, keep you guys in mind on this one. I am not the type of guy to spoil movies. So don't expect a spoiler in this movie. You have to watch it to actually understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, as far as actor's performance, Michael B. Jordan, to me, he took a character that was real. And he brought it to life again and actually embodied him. That's, that's how well Michael B. Jordan's performance really took out of me. And I thought he, he did the perfect, respectable way of respecting the character who actually had recently passed. We're trying to get home. Uh, Ariana O'Neal, I'm oh, sorry, Ariana Neal, she, she actually looks to me like the real daughter of, of, Mike, of, Oscar, of Oscar Grant. She actually looks like her. So that's just my opinion. It might, I might be wrong. Might be right. It's all. It's all you guys' opinions. Feel, everything's subjective. To, uh, and I think she actually, she actually took my heart. Honestly, she she took my heart in this movie. And I believe she stole the show from Melly Diaz and Octavia Spencer, 
And I'm scared. I hear guns. Don't just firecrackers. You're safe inside. What about you, Dad? And the reason I say that is because Melody Diaz and Octavia Spencer, to me, didn't really... I really felt like their performance wasn't really... I wasn't really feeling for them until right around the end where they literally, if we were talking in a boxing term, got back up and really fought back into the performance. And to me, that was... That was greatly done. What is going on? You guys got plans for the night? I meet up with the fellas, head out to the city. Why don't you take the train out there? That way you guys can hang out and not have to worry about anything. The timing was nicely done. Uh, I truly believe it brought out tears. It brought tears to my eyes. I cried four times in the movie. I don't cry a lot. I'm the big man, you know, grown man don't cry. But when movies really capture you and take you and take you on a ride and hold you, they're either going to do one or two things. They're going to twist your heart or they're not going to do anything at all and it's just a movie and you already realize that. To me, this wasn't more than a movie. It felt like I was there. It felt like I felt for this person and it made me feel for the tragedy that occurred in the movie. It, and to me, it, was a, it, it still is like a been there, done that type of movie, of course, but it had its unique special ingredient, which was the tragedy of a reality. And to me, they did, they did the well-respected way of, of uh, introducing Oscar's uh, character and really putting him out there for people to see and to understand him. And I thought they, they did a nice job on that one. Uh, it was worth making, definitely worth making. As far as cameos go, I didn't really see them. I mean, there was a lot of cameos in there, and I didn't really care for as much as them. I mean, they were okay, but for me, who really stuck out, and you're going to be surprised, Kevin Durant. That guy, I don't know what it was, but he 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 took he got focus on me. He kept me. I couldn't take focus off of him. He kept me watching him. I, I just couldn't get enough of actually watching this guy. I know it's gonna be hard to believe he plays one of the cops in the movie, but just watch and see if what you if you know what I'm talking about, or if you get or you understand what, or you coming from where I'm coming from on that one. It kept me interested. Uh, I never lost focus in the movie. Sometimes you lose interest, sometimes it's long, sometimes it's not as good as you thought it would be. Sometimes you got hyped and then it just goes downhill from there. It wasn't a bit dry to me. Here's what I say about movies. This is going to sound weird, but just go with me on this one. To me, a movie is like dating someone. Okay, uh, you got to know, you got to hear around about this movie. You know, you thought, oh, okay, I want to see it. That's, we're talking about trailers, advertisement, posters, all that. And you go on this date with this movie, you spend time with this movie, you feel for this movie, you uh, try to listen to this movie, you try to care for this movie, try to relate to this movie. You want to know if you're going to see it again. Um, you know, it's just, you want to know if you, could, if you feel for this movie, if you really, if this is a movie that you couldn't, uh, you don't want to take your eyes off of. You don't want a third person or someone interrupting you while you're watching this movie, considering that a lot of people do like to distract you during the time you're watching the movie, and then you lose focus, but this movie was one of those movies where you wanted your time and effort brought into you. And let me just be clear on this one. Directors, productions, actors, everybody, the story, the screenwriter, everybody, they put a lot of time and effort into this movie. So for us to take any type of lost interest at any point, even though they put such dedication to it, is insulting to me. Because uh, really, I mean, they really worked really hard and they brought this movie to life and they wanted to show you. And maybe it's movies that you've seen before, maybe it's movies you haven't seen before, you really are, it opens your eyes to a different perspective. But we need to treasure and cherish these movies. Otherwise, we're always going to lose the big picture inside a movie which is to entertain us and to show us something we probably have never seen before in our lives and to feel for something we've never thought we'd feel before. Anyways, it's a classic of its time. It's going to be remembered for years to come, in my opinion. But let's rate the sucker. Um, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 94%. IMDB gave it a 7.6. And uh, Ticket Freaks, from 1 being bad to 5 being a movie that's worth watching, I, or it's just a must-see movie, I'm going to rate this at a 5. Despite the Melody Diaz and the Octavia Spencer, I believe the performance was lacked in that, I still have to give this movie its journey, its, its presence, the, uh, the, the, the thing, the feeling it brought to me. I just, it was indescribable. So, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Anyways, that's going to do it for us today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Please subscribe or tell a friend, and I hope to see you guys next time, okay? Peace!